Welcome to the Habits and Hustle podcast, a podcast that uncovers the rituals, unspoken habits, and mindsets of extraordinary people. A podcast powered by Habit Nest. Now here's your host, Jennifer Cohen. Okay, this this podcast, uh, I'm very excited to have him. Uh, I, I actually reached out to Dr. His name's Dr. G. And if you don't, if you're in the health and wellness space, or if you're interested in anything health, wellness, or under that umbrella, this is your guy. He is the, truly one of the most knowledgeable people I have been introduced to in a very long time. Um, like I said, his name is Dr. G, and he has a podcast called Heal Thyself, which I'm telling you, every single episode, you learn so many amazing nuggets. I literally have so many questions for you. I don't even know where to begin. So let's just begin by saying, hello, Dr. G. Hello, listen, if this isn't the most unique podcast I've ever been on, I'm walking on a treadmill. You sure are. And chit-chatting about the stuff that I love. So, I mean, like I'm all, I, all I do is talk about movement and exercise for so many people. So this is like the epitome of my essence. Because, well, I'm glad that to hear you say that. I feel like because you're like in the space of health and wellness, I wanted to kind of put do a podcast, not only that was a little bit different, but kind of kill two birds with one stone and have, you know burn some calories, move, have some movement. But also there is like a correlation between when you move, your brain is much more alert and it gives you more creative ideas and mm-hmm. everything like that. So I figured, why not, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so we're, okay, so why don't we talk about you? you. So you're, you're actually a, a naturopathic doctor. Yeah. Um, and you specialize in, onco- you're kind of like an oncology, an yeah. oncologist. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, I did my residency in oncology. It's always been something that kind of drew me in. And then I had a personal experience where my mom passed away when I was in school. Mm-hmm which sort of sucked me in. It wasn't even drawing me in. It's like, all right, well, here's where you gotta go. So um, my residency was in oncology. So I saw thousands and thousands of different types of cancer from different ages, right? Like I'll see a 19 year old woman and then an 80 year old man and every other cancer in between and age in between. So um, that led me to understand that, boy, like this is, this is, this ain't good. Right. You know, and I was over here thinking, sure, if I just eat well all my life, I'll never get cancer. And then I understand how multifactorial it was. There's so many reasons why people get sick. And that's sort of been my journey now of like picking at, okay, what's the environmental factor and cause of cancer? What about gut? What about hormones? And that's why we were talking about like why you see me as someone who's so well-rounded is because I had to investigate all of that to understand what cancer is. Because ain't nobody else understanding what cancer is because look at the state of it. It's it's bad. It's really bad. Come... Come the time when I'm a seven-year-old man, it'll be one in two men and one in three women, right? Statistically speaking, that's me or my brother. That's really, really disheartening. So what can we do now? Is it because the environment, okay, two things which I find interesting. Number one, I feel like wellness as an umbrella or a whole is much more talked about. It's become like a a buzzword in a way, right? Wellness, wellness, Mm -hmm. health. But yet people are getting sick yeah. at a much higher rate. Is it mostly because of the environment, what we eat? Like, what's the main causes of this stuff? Things have changed. Things have changed for sure. Uh, our food is much more adulterated. And you found, you see my passion in that in the show where I talk about the spectrum of like what quality food is versus a company yes. that is like making it seem like it's quality versus true quality and what to look for. I think... I love this. because you call out so many companies yeah. that's, that, that they claim they're a certain thing? Yeah. And when you like, kind of like look under the hood, it's very yeah. different. It's a concept of greenwashing. And it's like, y- you and I can come out with a company, right? right? Let's say it's a counter cleaner and it's gonna kill everything. And we formulate it in this downstairs and we put all the crappiest chemicals in there. Right. We half ass it, but we put a nice label that says buzzwords like natural, clean, probiotic spray, like green. And we could put like all trees and everything. We could sell it. Yeah. And who the heck is gonna know? Nobody. The packaging is what's most important. And if, let's say we convince Whole Foods to carry it, then it's at Whole Foods. Everyone's like, oh my God, it's at Whole Foods. It's gotta be fine. Well, what you find is a lot of these things, let's say for household cleaners, um, laundry detergents, foods, there, there's a lot of greenwashing. It's like, you gotta look under the hood. 
but we never learned how. Give us examples, like for example, the word natural. Yeah, people so I, think, oh yeah, that means it's great for you. Yeah, listen, you know, I, you, look, I'm a New Yorker, so I have no problem speaking up. Yes, good. And I have, I have always, I've always been uh, a champion of like truth and justice. And I kid you not, if I was in a, a politician, I would have been on fire at some point in my life. But this is something that I really care about. So, like, let's say for example, mush. Mush overnight oats, which are at Whole Foods, right. and I have a lot of people in the wellness industry who's like, "Oh my God, I eat those!" Like here, you have overnight oats with not you have anytime anything has oats, it has to be organic. It has to be because they use glyphosate as a desiccant. Glyphosate is a very toxic pesticide. A desiccant meaning a drying agent. So then you have these oats that are dry. On top of that, they have uh, different fruits. So when it comes to fruits, really, when you have strawberries. Berries, raspberries—they have to be organic. Right. You have anywhere from forty-seven to ninety-something pesticides per serving on there. So That's I have like a, a dirty dozen, right? Like there's certain yeah, things yeah. that must be must be organic. Right. And then, whereas like the clean fifteen is fifteen foods that don't necessarily need to be organic. Unfortunately, the majority of the foods that fall into this mush overnight oats right. are on the dirty dozen. And I have a problem with that because there's no labeling that tells me that it's safe. And I have a bigger problem that it's at Whole Foods and people are eating it, thinking it's a, a really clean yeah. breakfast to give their kids every single look. You and I have it right now. We want, we're not going to die, but every single day that's going to have an effect on the system, especially if you're giving it to kids. Right. So cumulative. Cumulative. Exactly. So like so. Because I've never seen, or is oats on the Dirty Dozen? It's not on the Dirty Dozen. Yeah. Oats, oats is not directly spayed with heavy right. pesticides, but it glyphosate in itself is used as, as drying agent, also with wheat. So I always question, like, all right, you see a lot of increase in gluten intolerance, mm -hmm. right, or just celiac disease in general. But my question is, it's like, are we really reacting to the gluten protein? Or are we just reacting to a lot, or is part of it the glyphosate that's really causing it to be very pathogenic in our body, right? That's why I'm big on, right, because it's a, spry, a, dry, a drying agent for the wheat. So it's like, how so much of why, an issue? That's why I don't think maybe it's not really a dirty dozen. It's probably like two dozen or three dozen, yeah, right? Because yeah. it's actually, if you're saying now oatmeal, which was not even on there because of what you just said, the reason behind it. People don't even think about that. They look at the dirty dozen being like berries or what else? What is a dirty dozen? So you have berries, cherries, like kale, basically leafy all of all, like the leafy, the soft stuff yeah. that can really absorb. Right. Whereas you'll see as a, another rule of thumb, the uh, Clean 15 will have like melons, yeah. cantaloupe, With right? skin that you don't normally Pineapple. Eat. Yeah, you're not going to eat the skin. Right. So I, I guess that's the, that would be the way to look at it. But regardless, dirty dozen, if you say, I don't want to spend all my money on organic food, then spend it on those 12 foods. They yeah. need to be organic, you know, just pay a little extra if you're getting berries or kale. So even like natural, so we're, like you were talking in the beginning, like when you see the, when you see natural on a label, that doesn't mean anything. Not at all. And look, the USDA organic label is far from perfect. Right. right, but it's the best standardization that we have right now to understand that oh, what I'm eating is not derived from sewer sludge, mm -hmm. irradiated, sprayed with pesticides, um, treated like crap. Basically, right. that's what we can say in so many terms. Um, that's and it'll ensure at least ninety five percent of that is clean. Right. Right. But not what natural means. What then? Na natural means nothing. Because anyone could put that on a you table. and I can make that that household spray in your basement right. and, and stamp natural on there. Based on what, like what, what kind of standards do they have to even use to put natural on there? There's, there, there's you, no, no standard. There's no one, standard. There's not, so we, we can, can make a supplement and do it. They, the FDA is not going to overlook that. It's what, what, what companies... But you're making a claim that's not true. Well, it, it, it could be natural. We could say it's natural because why? We can, we can add... We can have all of those crappy chemicals and then put in lemon essence. Right, so that makes it more yeah. natural ingredient. Yeah, because that's that's very subjective. What the heck is natural to you versus to me versus the consumer? Right. Right, but at least it's not subjective. It's objective when it comes to a USDA organic label because then we go, all right, at least we know this, this, and this is not in there. So what do you think? Okay, so we, you just said something about more people than ever are becoming gluten intolerant, right? Now, from what everything I remember is that if you're gluten intolerant, that means you have celiac disease. But I feel like everybody now is like jumping on this bandwagon of like, I'm gluten intolerant, I'm gluten. Like, how come there's like such now like a wider net? Do you right. believe, is there such a thing even as gluten well, intolerance? Well, there, there's like non-celiac gluten sensitivity, right? And those are people who say, 
you know what? Every time I eat wheat, barley, rye, sometimes even oats, I'll have a reaction and I don't feel good. Me personally, I, I fall into that. Certainly, it took me maybe four years to understand, and I don't have celiac disease, but four years it took me to understand why every time I eat certain foods, uh, I start peeling. My mm -hmm. whole, my hands especially, they just peel chunks. It's really crazy. Wow. Um, and it took me a while to understand, wow, maybe I should just stop gluten, and it went away forever. And then on the holidays, I had this cookie that had a little bit of it, right. and then I started getting peeling on my hands again. So for me, that's the way it manifests. For other people, it could be respiratory issues, gastrointestinal issues, skin issues also like me. It's, I think that more of us are sensitive to it and just don't realize, especially as men, we're not connected to our bodies. We don't have a monthly right. menstruation, you know, where right. women are more understanding of their bodies. But or more I, in tune with more what's in happening, tune. yeah. Yeah, but I think that a lot of us are more affected by gluten than we think. And that doesn't go to say, listen, a lot of people are not. They could just eat a big piece of wheat and that's a great constitution, but I think we need to pay closer attention how do we react to those foods. Because my point was more that I thought people use that as, like, they don't want to eat bread because they think it's a weight loss thing. So then they'll say, oh, I'm gluten intolerant. When So you're saying you believe that there is such a thing as gluten intolerance. Oh, certainly, 100%. In addition to also having, you can also yeah, have, you can have celiac. celiac. See, I was saying the opposite. I was thinking like, well, is that really such a thing? Like, could you really have, can you really, really be gluten intolerant or people just like? Yeah, no, you can like certainly. you know? No, certainly, because your body will react to that protein. Right. Not everyone's is going to react with inflammation or right. or inflammation in the gut, but for some, for some folks, they will react, especially if you're sensitive. And I've seen it because like I've had when I did some pediatrics in school, like kids would come in with eczema, and usually when, it, when you have eczema, the two things you look for are dairy mm -hmm. and gluten. I have eczema. So, yeah, so we removed dairy from the kid's diet, right? And mm -hmm. it got better, but it didn't fully resolve. And I was like, listen, you, you may not want to do it, but just try, try, get, up, get them all off of gluten foods, and in two weeks, already it was disappearing, three weeks it was gone. You know, so like that child did, well, didn't have celiac disease, right but was specifically sensitive to gluten. They were sensitive. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that if you had organic wheat, let's just say, would that make it, be would that make it better? Yeah, that's a great question because the, then, then the implication is that with organic wheat, there's no glyphosate sprayed as a desiccant right. to dry it out. So again, is the conventional wheat that maybe that kid was eating, is he reacting to a synergy between glyphosate and the gliadin protein, or was it just specifically the gliadin protein? It, it's if someone goes, I can never get rid of wheat or barley or rye, right. then, then go with organic then if that's the case and see if your symptoms improve, right? Maybe me, I just needed some organic wheat, you know? So I've noticed that when people take out the gluten in a lot of different things, they add a lot of other junk or other ingredients that are junk. Mm -hmm. So like, what would you do? And that would also have a different effect. That would also affect your body. Oh yeah, I mean like like you're saying like when they remove the wheat barley rye, yeah, just like like eat. then they put a lot of different. Like I'm not saying tapioca flour is bad or whatever. Oh, I see. Yeah. But then there's much more ingredients in there to supplement. Yeah, for sure. I think there needs to be better education as to like when you take something away or like a habit out of someone's life, you have to in, like them, introduce somebody to something healthy, right? So let's say if like they were eating barley all the time and that was a staple in our diet, well then introduce them to quinoa or amaranth, or millet, you know, some ancient grains or something, couscous, no, not even couscous, but like yeah. those ancient grains, that, that, that'll be a good, you just have to, I know what you're saying, like once you remove like those breads and you're eating more like gluten-free breads, it can be completely well, full I, of. I find like a lot of these things, like what I mean is like when you, when you take out, do you remember back when, and now I'm aging myself, but I don't care, like you took, everything became fat-free, that was a big yeah. phrase, like everything, and so, what they had to do to eliminate the fat was add more sugars, yeah, right? Yeah. So I feel like what's happened, it's evolved now, where when now something is, a, when you're buying, let's say, gluten-free bread versus regular bread, when you take out when you take out the gluten ingredients, I know they're saying, putting yeah. other ingredients in yeah. there that, can, that makes the product less, no, sorry, makes the product more processed. Uh, and that's, that's absolutely true. If you right. go to, let's say, Ralph's over here, mm -hmm. and you go to the quote-unquote gluten-free section, mm -hmm. it's processed, and it's processed heavily. You have gluten-free, you know, teddy bear crackers. Right. You have gluten-free chips full of it. And, and for me, I, I care less about gluten-free than more eating whole foods. That's right. It's like, it's like, why don't you just eat something with one ingredient 
as a whole, right? Like have a big dish full of produce, all the colors of the rainbow, and instead of eating barley, have some quinoa. Well, that's my thing with vegan also. I know you are a yeah. vegan, and don't hate me that I am not a vegan. I have, <laughs> more, more of my friends are not. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So I'm still like, I don't identify with it. I identify with other things that are like deeper than vegan. Okay, well, you know, I just want to be, want yeah. to ask, tell you, but um, I find that when people, a lot of times without the knowledge base, or the time to cook vegan or to make vegan properly, they end up eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of gluten, a lot of like carbs, not enough protein, mm. right? So like, like for example, meatless, like that meatless meat. Yeah, yeah. What's your take on that? Yeah. It's all processed, but yeah. I think it's healthy. I think folks, and before I get to that, I think folks need to have a better transition, a better education into how they should eat when they go into a plant-based or whole food plant-based vegan diet okay. the, uh, and understanding what like plant-based means and whole food plant-based versus like just vegan, right? Vegan doesn't tell me much. Vegan tells me you could be eating, you know, a, like a bowl of rice, some cookies, some cereal, and that's your meal for the day. Mm -hmm. Whereas if someone's eating whole food plant-based, then I know it's plant-centric with whole foods around it. That's very important. Now, that leads to the next thing when we talk about those beyond meat or impossible burgers. And you know that I did a review on this because I have a problem. Like, again, whole foods, those aren't whole foods. Those are very processed, mm -hmm. right? Aside from, yeah, okay, they may have gluten, they may not, but the, the issue is that they're, they're processed heavily, right? And when you think about the impossible burger, they, to make it taste meaty, they needed to extract from the root a specific protein that's mm -hmm. new to us. It's new to, it's, it hasn't, it's never been extracted scientifically like right. that, like chemically, right? Through food nutrition, through science. We, we have, we've never been presented with this very special protein that makes it taste like meat. So for me, there's gonna be a ton of people developing allergies to the food in general, right? Because their body's gonna be like, what the hell is this? What is this protein? That's with the Impossible Burger. Same thing with the Beyond Burger. I mean. There's no indication that it's organic, right? They're using different. They're using soy protein. You can't. Right. You can't really you eat it. Soy? Well, you can't really. Well, to, there's two things with soy, but like you can't really eat soy if it's conventional. You can't. It's it's that's one of the most heavily sprayed foods. Right. It's a nasty food. If you're gonna eat, choose to eat soy, then make sure it's organic. The thing with soy is. Um, we're just jumping, right? I know there's so many. Cause I, I'm so there's so many things with you. Okay, let's yeah. stay on the Beyond Meat stuff or the or the meatless meat, and then we'll yeah. get to soy. Okay. So meatless meat. Okay. So also, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's and, processed. It's not a whole food. Um, people are going to develop allergies to it. I never tried it except before my show or review. I tried the Beyond Burger and I had the worst stomach ache. It, it's just my body's used to what it knows, and what it knows is whole foods, fiber. My microbiome celebrates when I eat those foods. Right. When I throw in something heavily processed like that, it's a mess. Uh, so I don't think that anyone should be eating it, to be honest. I think that we should go back to, I think they should put millions and millions or billions of dollars, like they're, they're making a lot of money now, right. into making a really good plant-based whole food burger. Right, like so, and also there's a lot of sodium, I find. In oh yeah, so I, that's a macronutrient profile, yeah, I mean. I mean. Tons. It's uh, That's why, I mean. I think just why it's better, I would think it's healthier just to have a burger because at least- Yeah, I mean, I, if, 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 if I wasn't a vegan, then I would have a very high quality burger instead of that. Right, like a grass fed. Or yeah, whatever. but as a vegan, I would love to see that those companies make a good quality plant-based whole food burger. You, you know, right, you absolutely. just develop something that, we, that is like the highest quality and it tastes really good. So you're saying soy. Tell me what you're gonna say about soy. Yeah, so soy and many times does get a bad rap uh, particularly because the big fear is that it'll estrogenize you. Right. Right. Now, soy is a phytoestrogen, it's a plant estrogen, but the the action that it has on our body is different than we think. Right. What soy does is it actually protects. It, we have receptors in every cell for estrogen. Right. Men and women. Okay. It actually protects that receptor. Uh, from being stimulated by the carcinogenic form of estrogen, right? Estro estradiol breaks down into different forms, right? So this is why I wanted you to do the Dutch test yeah. so we can look at your hormones because what we'll see is in your liver the way that parent estrogen is being broken down. Estradiol is broken down. It's bro it goes down three pathways, or I call them roads. 
Right. If you're going down the road with the potholes and the glass and the sketchy neighborhood, that's, that's gonna lead to or predispose you to cancer. So what are the ratios between the three, right? Soy protects the cell from that carcinogenic form of estrogen, right? That's so- That's interesting. I thought people who are like prone to breast cancer should not be eating soy. Actually, so, so the research on breast cancer and soy is that it's protective. It's protective preventatively and for women who do have breast cancer. Now, the caveat is this. If you have a predisposition or you do have an autoimmune disease, that might be a problem because soy can technically stimulate the immune system to exacerbate that autoimmune disease. That can be a problem. The other thing is, it, even if you don't have an autoimmune disease, there's a certain subset of folks who have um, a species of their bact a bacteria in their gut that can metabolize that soy into something called equal. Equal will also have more, uh, that'll have more hormonal effects. So it's hard to say, right. small amount of people. For the, for the majority of us, soy would be safe. I would highly recommend to eat tempeh versus conventional tofu, right? Or something like right. miso, con organic miso, organic tempeh versus conventional tofu. That's gonna be really important. Um, that's my take on it. Do I eat it? No, not much, not really. I don't like it and it hurts my stomach. Right, so then, yeah. well, it's, it's, so, it's interesting because I feel like you have to know thyself really well, to be honest, like the name of your podcast, yeah. because there's so many factors that would make something good for you or bad for you. It's not like a one size fits all at all. For sure, you know? it's, like, it's individuality. Like, let's say, let's say after this we go, let's both eat some quinoa, vegetables, right. sweet potato, all this fun stuff, and you may be completely fine, energized, and I'd be like, my stomach is killing me, right? right? We're different, our microbiome's different, our enzymes are different, we break, we break down things very differently. So that's the, that's the hard part of like practicing medicine, is like, you come in, then your sister comes in, completely different treatment Totally plans, different. You know? Like, like you said, like you could, have, you could be eating soy, and you know, and be perfectly fine with it, if you were dispositioned to be to have, to have breast cancer, but the caveat, if you have an autoimmune, yeah, then that would be then it wouldn't be exactly. It's, so it's a skin condition like a psoriasis. That's an autoimmune. That's autoimmune. Yeah, right. Yeah, so. so so technically, anyone who does have psoriasis shouldn't be really. And I have a history of psoriasis, so I, I just don't want to eat it. You right. Know? So then. To, uh, so to, should everybody take a Dutch test? What is a Dutch test? Tell me okay. what it is. Look, Dutch I have test. no affiliation with Dutch tests. I just talk about it because it's such a good test. Right. Um, everyone needs to be checking their hormones, men and women, whoever is listening to the show, right? Um, because men down that pathway of disrupted hormones throughout life, you know, we, we, we develop all these symptoms, but at the end of it is prostate cancer. The same thing with women, right? Ovarian cancer, breast cancer. So, and we're inundated. Right. Right? We're inundated. I just did my show talking about this. It's like, all right, plastics, boom, that's a hormone disruptor, right? Every single day in our water, if we have really poor quality water, guess what we're getting? We're getting birth control, right? Wow. We're, right. we're being exposed to that. So air, food, all these things are really messing up our hormones. Our hormones are very sensitive. Right. So the Dutch test is a urine test, a dried urine test, um, where we're able to see what your hormone profile looks like. And it's much better than a blood test. I, I, I recommend both a year. We like to see testosterone and estradiol in the blood, but in the urine, we can see how they break down. So we can see, well, damn, like, okay, I have a lot of testosterone, but when it breaks down, it breaks down to the, the metabolite that really pushes hair loss, you know? Or as a female, wow, look, my estrogen is really high. Um, my mom had breast cancer and look, my ratio of carcinogenic form of estrogen is really, really high. This is a problem. I need to fix this now before breast cancer manifests in my body. So how come no one's talking about this Dutch test? Functional, functional, naturopathic functional, we do. And the one thing I miss is cortisol. We can see the way your cortisol is flowing throughout the day, wow. right? So it should be really high in the morning and then start going down progressively at night and be really low at night. The reason we get tired is because cortisol is so low and melatonin is really high. The reason we wake up is because cortisol is our internal alarm clock. So it's like someone like you who's always on the run, right? Yes. Who's, who's, who's on the phone and, you know, assistance. And we are just talking about yeah. how we need assistance. You need <laughs> we're to be, share one. Yeah, well, you need to be checking your cortisol, like, you know, at least once a year, twice a year, you know, just to see, well, damn, like, I gotta, 
I got to take some me time or I need to be have better habits at night mm -hmm. to facilitate better cortisol production, uh, more regular cortisol or cortisol production throughout the day. So where do people find it? Like, where, I want to take this. I'm going to take this Dutch test. Yeah, you can. Well, you can uh, you can get it through a naturopathic or functional doctor. Um, and it's Do all easy. of them have it? They all have it. Yeah, okay. the most should, they should be aware of it by now. It's a it's a hot test that came out like two years a few years ago, but it really gained popularity last year. Okay. Um, but it's easy. I mean, you do it as a woman on day 19, 20, and 21 of your cycle. If you're not regular, there's another way to do it, but um, you do it and you know do it over three days. As a man, we just do it over one day. It's really easy, any time of the month. Wow. Yeah. But uh, but all of us should check in, and I know as a man, like. We got to make sure our testosterone is good, right? The predisposition to prostate cancer is not only high amount of estrogen for us men, but also low amounts of testosterone over a long period of time. So I'm 35. I really, really want to make sure that my testosterone is at a really good level for me. And I'm maintaining that with sleep, exercise, nutrition, movement, all the things that are important to facilitate that. And when you exercise, and then also testosterone is important for women too, right? Very, very right? important. We want that balance, you know? And right. it's like, as long as we don't have something like a PCOS situation where your testosterone is really high, your right. metabolites are really high, we should have a perfect balance, all of us. But at this point, we, there's, no, there's no perfect because there's so much disrupting it. Right. But we can do a lot, which is exercise is, I don't care if you're a man or woman, exercise is so important. I the talk about it all the time. Like yes. Strength training. Yes. Yeah. As a, a, women cannot be afraid of strength training because you have a 35% reduction or you can prevent breast cancer by 35% just by working out. Literally just by aerobic and anaerobic training. That's incredible. 35%. 35%. Pretty much that's what that's like the, wow. the figure that we look at. And um, look how much power that is. Yeah. Even if your mom had breast cancer, your sister, that's a lot of power that we have over our health. Just that. And then you have like environmental stuff, that's about 25%. You see it starts building right. up. If we start just making small changes, we put ourselves in a really good place. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of men I know who are like in their 50s, 60s, who do a lot of weightlifting, weight, tra weight, weight training. Yeah. And their testosterone naturally is much higher than people who are in their 20s. Yeah, it goes down. Simple yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's the, by, by, once you're 30, it's already going down. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's like, How much whoa. a year does it decrease? I don't remember how much, but enough enough that it's not good. Yeah, enough where it's yeah. a problem. Enough, exactly. that, enough, enough to where we have to be proactive. And that goes to sleep. Like, one of the best things we can do for our testosterone is sleep. Yeah. And sleep well. And sleep deep. See, right? that's the thing. Sleeping deep. I yeah. think it's because you're sleeping doesn't mean anything. Well, I got this aura ring and I have no affiliation with it on my pinky here. Okay. And this aura ring, like before that, I thought I slept well. Yeah. All of a sudden, like eight hours of sleep really is like ending up being like seven or six and a half. Like the amount of times I'm rolling and waking up and I didn't know. Um, so it's sort of like a way to hack your... But was, I mean, this is what I never understand about all these different devices to track your sleep. Yeah is okay so now you know what are you going to do about it you're no, sleeping no no how do you no. change the depth of your sleep well right well you look at the factors right like okay well if my habit is going to sleep at 12 okay that's a problem like so because of this now i'm going down to 11 and seeing how i'm sleeping now to 10 now i know i'm learning that 10 o'clock is pr pretty much the best deep deep sleep i can get so you're right? doing it by trial and error of going to bed just understanding times. myself better or, right. or or even like oh glass of wine how did how bad did that oh. mess me up if i had it at seven o'clock versus three Got you it. see what or i mean caffeine or caffeine right you know what i mean what do you think about caffeine uh well it, there's there's two sides to it um do you for, drink coffee i don't because i don't it, it really amps me up you know, as, a, as if I don't have enough to say, yeah. just, <laughs> it does. But, um, but uh, there's certain folks who, who don't break down coffee. They have a liver enzyme that, that it just builds up. And I'm pretty sure I have that enzyme or the lack of the enzyme. But coffee in itself is has shown to be protective pretty much. I think it gets a bad rap. Uh, I did a whole show on coffee talking about the benefits of it and the possible negative effects of it. But I still don't buy that. Like there's a, there's an association with bladder cancer, but... I don't really buy, I buy more of the positive effects. The most important thing is getting quality coffee. Now, coffee can really be inundated with heavy metals. So if you're getting like, if you're going to Dunkin' Donuts every day and getting your coffee, I guarantee you you're getting high amounts of cadmium, probably high amounts of lead, 
acrylamide. Really? Yeah. Have so, you done a test on the Dutch on the Dunkin'? Dunkin no, coffee? but I, I I looked at independent testing of the popular brands of coffee, like Starbucks. Yeah, and and one company gave me their testing, and they showed me which companies were which. When you access it online, you can't see the like the, which companies are which, but I got the inside scoop. Tell me the inside scoop. And, well, I, I mean, know the inside well, scoop. There's there's only like a handful of good coffee and so Starbucks did, did they have a lot of do they have a lot it, of uh, it wasn't that good no so was, how well how bad is not good uh, I wouldn't have it every single day or I wouldn't probably even have it once a week to be honest yeah like what coffee bean you have to I didn't see them or maybe I did I don't remember but the um, which one was it pure purity coffee I believe purity or pure coffee I think it's purity um, they they were the best one they were that they were really good. Really, really clean. Where do you get that even? You get it online and you just brew it yourself. Oh, see, there yeah. we go. Yeah. But you can make it a ritual, especially you on the run. You yeah. could take that time. And like, I know this habits and hustle, like we talk about yeah. habits and rituals. And rituals are so important to me. Super so it's important. like, part my ritual, because I can't have coffee, is I'll make matcha green tea in the morning. You know, but I'll make it a ritual. Like I'll have music and right. It's a whole thing for you. It'll be yeah, yeah. and it makes it special. Exactly. That's how I feel though about my cold brew coffee. I'm like a big fan. Have you heard of a cold brew company that's called Grady's? No. And no, I'm not getting paid by them or anything. It's something I actually just genuinely love. They're called Grady's and they have the best cold brew cold I've ever brew. had. I'm, I'm addicted to it. I've had it for like the last two years, three ah. years. They're very small. They're like not a very well-known Tastes brand. good, huh? It tastes good. I'm curious now how how the quality is with all the yeah, legs get the, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, so what you ask for is a certificate of analysis, COA. Okay. A COA. There's, you can ask... So you can, you can actually contact any company and ask for this? Well, th now that's a loaded question because I did a, when I did my plant protein investigation, I, I called 31 companies. Not all of them gave me their COAs. But the ones that did, you know, if, if they were shitty, I called them out. Right. You know, and, and you'd be surprised. A lot of these plant-based protein powders have really high levels of lead. Oh, I know. It's crazy. Really? Yeah. And, and that's, that's, not, that's not a good thing. So, um, yeah. That, so calling companies for the coa and if they give you a problem right. like they did i tell them like look heavy metals are not proprietary because they go it's proprietary you can't right. we don't want to i go then just send me the heavy metal section that's not proprietary right. to your formula right you know it's something that's inherent and they should share it but companies they they weasel their way out of it trust me and people have so much of that protein powder and like the biggest companies are like toxic in a way yeah but then how does it manifest like you don't like we sat, talked about earlier like it, most of this stuff is accumulative nothing's going to happen to you once or twice or three times for sure but if it's in your if it's in your body and in your bloodstream mm -hmm. for years on in what kind of implications does it have well heavy metals have an affinity in particular heavy metals have an affinity for the brain right, right. so yeah okay you might go oh you know i'm, I'm getting older and my memory's not what it was but maybe your memory should be a lot better Right. You know, like it's hard to, because imagine like taking small dose of poison every single day. You're not going to really notice when it's aging you or you're super fatigued. It's messing up your energy cycle in your body or your nerves are off. You know, like you just go, oh, I'm getting numbness and tingling. It's, I mean, something's just off. Um, but really one of the best ways to do it is test, see how high you are, what's going on in your body. And then there's ways to move it out of your body too. I, I love infrared sauna. I have one. An infrared sauna is like you have one. I yeah. have red light. I have a red light. Um, Those are great. Panel. Yeah, the panels are beautiful, but the sauna, like sweating, sweating, sweating it out, it out. sweating you, the toxins out. You can literally, there, you can have before and after. They they measured it. You can get rid of heavy metals through the body, right? Really? And so, yeah, heavy metals are really a thing. It's you know? a huge thing. I I mean, you know, I've been tested and I have really high mercury from all the fish I eat. And mercury is a nasty it's one. Mercury the loves the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, and there's a way. Isn't there a way you can get rid of? Mercury? Yeah, there's you another can. way besides the infrared. There's like um, oh, like chelation. You're yeah, talking chelation. About? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm tend to be. I'm very conservative the way I work. So I work like slow over time, because uh, I just sometimes I'm scared to like really jump in and yeah. pull it all out, especially when it comes to heavy metals. I think the body is more intelligent than any doctor. Right. So if a doctor goes, hey, you know, we're just going to get rid of all of that. You know, like, let, try to work with the body and see what it's trying to do first. Um, do you eat fish then because of all the mercury? And no, the I wouldn't. No, I, I, if I wasn't a vegan, I'd be very careful with the amount of fish that I eat. Right. I was going to say, well, you're a vegan, but so you you, what, would, you think it's dangerous, though, to eat too much fish. I, oh, I certainly, the, the problem that no one's talking about is microplastics in fish, 
right? That's having an estrogenic effect in men and women. Like, in fish. Yes, fish can be a really potent source of hormones, of estrogen. We don't even talk about that, right? Because we're talking about conventionally raised meat right, right. that is being, you know, given antibiotics and hormones to, to get it bigger. Um, but, but you know, you think about Lake Mead. And this is interesting because I just had a guy on the show talk about how he was talking to the ranger at Lake Mead. And he was saying, Lake Mead is uh, Arizona and near Las Vegas, man-made lake by the Hoover Dam. And they said there was a feminization, meaning that there was a switch from the fish and the frogs from male to female in that lake. So they have to put in new fish every season because of that, because they're all becoming females. Um, oh my. I don't know why they put in new fish. I don't know what the, I'm not, I never fished, but the whole point is that it's really interesting because the surrounding, right? What is, we've polluted our oceans horribly, our lakes horribly. And I think now, unfortunately, we're suffering the effects of that. And it's coming as a cycle, like through nature, right back to us. So, um, wow. yeah, so I would be very careful. I, I, if I did it, I would eat small, like smaller fish. Like sardines. Yeah, but I certainly wouldn't be eating like swordfish or tuna every other day. Trust me, when I was working yeah. out and in college, I was eating right from the can, the tuna. tuna me too. My, I love, the thing is, I actually love tuna. It's my favorite. Yeah, it was great. I loved, I used to love salmon, you oh, know, but. I, it's, I know, and the, and the problem is there's, is there, it's kind of like the, the bad outweighs the good in a way. It, I think we just need to be informed. like. That's the whole point of what I do my show is like, here, I'm here to teach you, learn, and then make your own decision. Right. Like, I'm just opening the door leading you to water. Like, figure it out right. yourself, figure the rest, yeah. Make so, a decision. So then, limit fish except small fish. Okay, got that. Um, and infrared saunas, how you think that can actually get rid of mercury poisoning or toxicity? It cer- it'll certainly more. start mobilizing those heavy metals and and different, you know, even water-soluble toxins, right, right through the skin. You know, How often out. do you need to do it, though? I have one. I do it like twice, three times a week. I wish I could do it every single day, you know, but it's like a little commitment. Yeah, right? it's a, it is a commitment, right? for sure. Yeah, but I, I love it. And uh, yeah, I'm big on that stuff. I'm big on like those, those, those hacks that we can do yeah. to optimize our health. What are some other hacks that you do to optimize your health? Ah, really cool. Um, well, I have, I have a cold plunge. I just bought one. So like, you bought a cold plunge? Yeah, I have like a little refrigerator in my front yard. Oh, uh, is it, does that one actually have ice in it though? It's like 35 degrees, so it's like little ice on the top. I hate it. It's, it's really hard to do. Oh, yeah. mentally, it's super mentally, difficult. But that's, that's the whole thing. Yes. It's like, I, I want to strengthen my mind, but my body too, right? Because we know that it will start stimulating. It actually can stimulate fat loss because it'll, yeah. it'll change the adipose profile in your body. Um, it'll re- increase your immune system strength and reduce inflammation. It, it has all these benefits. But for me, I really love the mind challenge mm. of it. And that's a hack. It's a huge right? hack. It's a huge hack. Yeah, that's um, a big one. That one's been big. I did that, um, you know, Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese, they started this, uh, you know, XBT training. Have you heard of this? No, thing? I know them too, though. Okay, they're great. Um, and part of the program is you go from a hot sauna to like the the ice bath, yeah. right? Not the ice plunge. Yeah. I swear that was truth. When they basically like forced me to go into this thing, I it was the worst thing in my life. It was the worst feeling I've ever had. I would say giving birth. No way. No, I'm not joking. Was easier than doing that. It, it was. It's hard. Torture. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. even do it more than like 90 seconds. Yeah, the first time I did, I thought I was going to die. But the problem yes. is... Why is that? Why? What, because what is your it? body is smart. It's it's sending these adaptive responses going, this is dangerous. Start start increasing respiratory action in the body, right? To, to put yourself in a more, you know, like you're in a sympathetic state. Everyone's t- Everything's tightening up. The, the mind thing is like coming out of that sympathetic state into a parasympathetic state. That's the most powerful part of it, right? Usually you need coaching in the first time. But she like, coached me. Gabby yeah. had to coach me. She's like, okay, she had to talk me off the ledge because I I went in the first time for like four seconds. I'm like, fuck this. I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, you have to try this. And I went for 90 seconds and I will tell you that was the worst 90 seconds of my life. Yeah. Okay. So I did 30 seconds the first time. And then and five you, minutes the next and time. Five, like, yeah. Five the next time actually, because I was like, I got into the mindset of breathing. And then you have to breathe through it. Breath. Oh. Breath is like one of the most important things we could pay attention to. The reason, there's a reason I have a breathwork teacher is because breath is so important. It's inherent. It's life. You can go from sympathetic to parasympathetic in five minutes. So of tell breathing. people what that is, because I think we, so. Breath work is literally no, no, just no, parasympathetic. And oh, okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, so our nervous system has like these these two tiers, right? And we shift and all throughout life. So let's say a, a bear comes in here in the middle of our podcast. 
<laughs> you better believe I'm running like high school track. That's my sympathetic <laughs> nervous system firing off. In that state, there's no blood going to my digestion. It doesn't matter what I ate before I came here. The body doesn't care about digesting. It cares about sending blood to my muscles, my pupils dilating so I, I'm aware of everything Is that around fight me. or flight? It's fight or flight. Yeah. It's exactly that. Parasympathetic is what they call rest and digest. So right. when you're in bed, when you're about to go to sleep, right. that's parasympathetic. You know, there's no blood to your muscles. Your body doesn't care about running. It's digesting. You're breathing. You're deep. You know, so you can also, we, we, when, even if there's no bear here, right. you're stressed throughout the day the same way. And your body is thinking that there's always a bear chasing you. Right? Yeah. You see what I mean? You're, yeah. you're still having that adaptive response. The, the key is then to be able to shift it back to parasympathetic even when you're running around. So let's say you have a huge schedule and you're on the phone, you hang up, you gotta run to your house, you get to a place, the minute you have open five minutes, instead of like, you know, going on Instagram, close your phone and just take five, take breaths for five minutes, mm -hmm. like deep breathing, right? In, inhale and then ex exhaling a lot, like double the amount. So inhale four seconds, exhale eight seconds, that'll bring you right to parasympathetic, through the signals of your diaphragm to your nervous system. It's beautiful, but it's powerful too. And you can do that even in an ice bath. Well, okay, so is an ice, okay, what's the difference between an ice bath and an ice plunge? Are they still the same effect? Oh, yeah, still the same effect. You're yeah. still gonna go in like 30 to 45 degree you know, this, water. Are they the same temperature-ish? Uh, yeah, give ish. or take five, I mean, at that yeah, point. Yeah, give matter. or take, yeah, yeah, they're the same-ish. They, they both still hurt. Oh. Definitely. You know, I yeah. Other hacks, I mean, sleep hygiene is important for me. So it's like an hour before bed. That's my time, me time, goodbye. Right. Phone is off. Don't text me. Right. I would an hour, you said, before? An hour before okay. bed. And then that is reflecting on the day, doing some visualization for the next day, uh, some meditation, um, maybe listening to some music, writing, poetry, whatever it is. And then I just get to bed. But like that establishes your parasympathetic right before bed right instead of like getting off the phone you know arguing with someone closing it and then going i'm going to take a shower and go to sleep right see what i mean yeah. like we have to facilitate these signals in our body the way we evolve we evolve the sun goes down it's time to go to bed right but instead you know we're watching netflix so you that's right exactly that's but does it i mean it's not all for what like everyone has a different thing like i personally like even with you know knowledge of different like hacks and you know, these trends and wellness, at the end of the day, honestly, like what really kind of calms me down and like, you know, turns off my brain is actually watching Netflix before mm. I go to bed, like to watch a show. Yeah. You know, it, I know it's like, it's like now, like, it's like the, it's basically like a faux pas to say you, I actually watch TV, oh my God. I'm I not, know, I know. Not, it's funny how I'm things change. I'm journaling at yeah. night, you know, yeah. because I, that makes, that like, takes my brain to a happy place. Well, the uh, same thing is with me with music. Like, yeah. if I listen to music, like, we're still consuming, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I, I love that, like, we're listening to music part. I also think there's something to be said about that reflective piece. Yeah. Right? Because, yeah. like, that reflective piece, we learn about ourselves. Right. That's why I talk about me time being, like, the one of the keys to health. Well, know? the other one that you said was a key to health was having a sense of purpose. Oh. That's a big pillar. Yeah, imagine, imagine going through life and not doing something that you know, this is my definition of health. And I don't believe in the theological right. version of it, but I believe in like, we know who we are, we know our potential, we know why we're here in this world, and we're doing the opposite. That for me, that's hell. If you saw me, right. and I love accountants, accountants are great, but if you saw me in an accounting cubicle, and but imagine you know what my potential was. Right. Like you but had more a- Or your you, passions are like so totally the opposite. And then we're doing that. The sense of purpose, and we even see it in health, Right, reduced doctor visits for those who have a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Right, just better overall health because we're carrying out why our soul is here, and that's beautiful. Like to do that work, right? To bring light to others, whether it's whether it's me literally creating, you know, basket weaving right. and sharing that light with people, or going on Instagram and talking about gut health. It's still the same. It's still the same energy. It's just manifested in different ways. In different ways. What's your now, now like going right back to what's your take on dairy? I know you're very, very, uh, you have very strong opinions is why I like you so much because you're not just like, you know, you're not just like flatlining with everything. It's boring to flatline, yeah, right? Yeah, well, you're not boring. That's why I like you. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. You have an opinion, which is good. Yeah, that's, that's, listen, go grow up in New York. You have to have an opinion about something. <laughs> you better have yeah, an opinion about something. Yeah, you have to, yeah. Something. So, um, the thing about dairy is that I don't want to be dogmatic about anything, but I am dogmatic about dairy. I don't think it has a purpose in human health at all. Even for kids? So it's, it, 
the only the only time that it would be quote unquote okay to have animal protein in the form of dairy is in childhood because we have that enzyme to break it down, right? So biologically, nature after mm-hmm. there's breastfeeding phase goes okay. This organism is not to be having um, dairy, right, or milk mm-hmm. from another species or just mom in general, and we're going to reduce that enzyme throughout life. So usually by the age of five. Where African American kids will have it younger, but by the age of five, your 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 enzyme to break down lactase is really low to break down dairy, right? So then you have people saying I'm lactose intolerant, but it's not that. It's just that you're not meant to have that that food in your life. Now, so wait, so you're saying that if you're five and under, you're able to break down much more efficiently than much any more adult so or teenager. Like when you're six or seven, it's really kind of declining. You, well, on paper, yes. After five, you start really declining. Usually, you know, some kids have it up to six, seven, eight. Uh-oh. Maybe even give it to my kid, and he's yeah. But but if you see, like, I think we're suffering from the repercussions of going against what nature is intending, mm-hmm. and that's sort of like a big definition of disease. Like we do the opposite of what our body is supposed to do. But we were drinking milk for, I mean, forever. We were. Like There's I, two I grew things. Up on milk and... So did I, right. so did I. Right. So there is a huge myth that milk does anything for bones. It doesn't do anything for bones. That I'll say that again. Yeah. There is no strong data that milk does anything for bones. That is a huge campaign lobbying to tell. That, I mean, that happened in the '90s. Remember, got milk, mm-hmm. all got that milk, stuff. Of course. That 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 was all based on nothing. It's pretty incredible to wow. think because when they do the study on, they did it on young girls, they did it on young boys. There was nothing that we saw, and I think it was Walter Willett who is was the head of nutrition at Harvard, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Who actually was like kind of like pushing milk in the beginning, did all of these studies and showed that like really doesn't do anything for, calcium doesn't do anything like that for the, for really the bones, but it's like the milk that doesn't. So, But if when, milk has a lot of calcium in it. It's not, it's not, not like that. And you can't even, you know what's crazy? Even supplementing calcium as a pill uh-huh. is not gonna do much for your bones. Wow. Okay. You know what's more important? Vitamin D. Right? right, vitamin D is a big one. Vitamin D is really important. That's that's going to help drive those nutrients to the bones. But vitamin D, it, it's like we've been convinced and brainwashed, and it's not just like the general public; it's dietitians too, mm-hmm. right? And 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 dietitians get mad when I say that. Like there was a quote by Marion Nestle, and she said, "Diet, she's a she's a really big food 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 scientist, I believe." What's her name? Marion Nestle. Oh, I think no I have, association with Nestle, though. Yeah, no, no, I know. I think I have a book of Yeah, that. she said, like, dietitians and nutritionists have been convinced that dairy is a health food. But it's not. Um, and, and let me go back to saying, like, I guess, you know, maybe 100 years ago, dairy is very different. But what we have is not even really dairy. It's really adulterated, right? Mm-hmm. We get pesticides. We get herbicides. We get antibiotics. We get hormones, right? Literally hormones coming in. One of the best ways to disrupt our hormones as men and women is to drink dairy. Remember that. One of the that's one of the most potent sources of estrogen that we're getting, right? Wow. And it's in ratios that are not meant for humans. It's in ratios that is meant for a cow, brand newborn, to go from 60 pounds to 600 pounds in like a year, right? But for us, think about that hormone profile. Now we're taking that profile and giving it to a baby or a young kid. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, nature is beautiful in its design, and that design is not meant for human beings. We're, we're actually, it would be better suited if we were drinking dog milk than cow milk. Like, the profile would be closer to us. Yeah. It would actually be more healthy to drink that. But who the hell is drinking dog milk? Is there such a thing? Do dogs yeah. even make milk? Yeah, yeah, they I do. Mean, As mammals, milk. yeah. Well, there's like also, but do you think that um, if you drink organic milk, Grass-fed organic milk. Look, does it make it? I, does it change again? Like how we change organic from for gluten, for example. You know, we talked earlier about mm-hmm. having organic wheat. How much difference does it make? Would you change your mind about dairy if it was organic and grass-fed? No, not at all. Oh, if if it's someone if though. someone yeah if someone goes, I have to have dairy, Doctor Gonzalez. I will never listen to everything you're saying, and I'm never going to let it go. I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. Make sure it's organic. Right, because now we know it doesn't have those antibiotics inside of it. Mm-hmm. Right, we know those cows weren't raised around pesticides, herbicides. Their food, their feed was higher quality. The the profile of fatty acids is a little different. It's going to be less mm-hmm. inflammatory. 
but still that profile is not made for human beings. That's right. what I'm saying. Like right. it's, an, it's inherent in the milk. Whether it's organic or not, it's inherent in the milk. It's not, it's not to be translated to humans. So what do we see as a result? Well, one of the best ways in studies to disrupt rats' gut is to give them casein protein from the milk, which is why when I was like, I was, I was never bodybuilding, but I was in fitness hard. <laughs> no, I, hey, look, I was, a twig. I was a lot more, yeah, mm -hmm. I was bigger in college. Anyway, I used to have those whey proteins. It, it, it killed my stomach whey protein, wow. right? And that mm -hmm. has a high amount of casein. Well, in studies, what do they give rats? They give rats casein to disrupt their gut. Right. So not only are you disrupting your gut with dairy, you see a lot of, and the, the most, the thing that really used to set me off is women used to come in with like jawline acne, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of acne and they go, I don't know what to do. And actually there's someone that we know, um, both of us, her story was she had acne all her life. Every dermatologist wanted to give her everything to suppress it, Accutane, mm -hmm. all of these creams. Retinase and all that she stuff. Said, she said all her life. And it wasn't until two years ago that the, um, no one, someone said, maybe you should stop dairy. She never thought of that. And it's incredible to me that a dermatologist would never even recommend right. that because the minute she did it, mm -hmm. in about a month, her acne was gone. All wow. her life. So imagining, imagine suffering all your life. And I, so, I see this myself. Like when I, ha I have females come in with jawline acne, you get them off of dairy and it resolves. And they get, they get mad because they go, why didn't anyone tell me this? You know? But what if, like, but you were saying earlier that it's not a one size fits all. Like, so some people could be fine with dairy. Some people could be fine, but, you're but saying most overall, people are not. Right. Most people are not. I'm telling you, like. But what do you it, have instead? Like, do you think almond milk, oat milk? There's so many different milks now. There are. Uh, almond, oh, what's, what's yeah? There are. So what do you believe in? So I did a whole show on alternative milks, and of course you th did. There was, <laughs> there was a. Uh, I think I think uh, there's some really good ones out now. There's there was that. That article that just came out on almonds and almond milk, the demand, yeah, putting a strain on honeybees, which is a new concept what? for many no, people. Tell me. Yeah, it was just an article. I don't know. I think it was New Yorker or New York Times. They um, put out an article saying that like the almond milk industry is putting so much strain on honeybees, and a lot of them are dying off because of you know the harvesting of almonds. Um, so oh, wow. if 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 that's to be believed, then okay, yeah, there's great coconut milk. Right. There's there's pea there's pea milk there's hemp milk. What do you drink? Um, right now I have one by Three Trees, and it's a pistachio milk. Pistachio milk? It's really good. I've never heard of that. It's really good. I've heard of cashew milk. Cashew milk is wonderful too. Yeah, malk is good. Malk and malk. I heard malk is very good. Malk is a good company. So they, like, what, what is malk though? Malk is almond milk. So what makes it good? There's no carrageen in it. Is it that exactly. It's literally just almond milk and distilled water. You see, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, why is carrageen so bad? It's a thickener. It's okay. a thickener. Uh, it comes. It comes from algae, I believe, red algae, I, I believe. Um, but the problem is, is that it's been linked to inflammation in the intestine, right? Uh, okay. But the thing is, there's not enough good data to fully support that. But I tell people, look, if you're reacting to it and you know that, like, if you change almond milks, it's one free of that. Mm -hmm. Then listen to your body, because like. I don't wait for data and studies to show me that like, okay, now it's definitively linked right. to intestinal inflammation, which was what I was saying maybe two years before. Like I pay attention to what someone's telling me now. You know, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's more important than studies. People hang on to like these studies as like Bible. Mm -hmm. My Bible is what the person in front of me is telling me. Right. I don't care if a study says that, you know, because people are so different. So why pistachio milk over oat milk? I just like the taste. Oh, okay. Is one better in terms of protein and Yeah, of no, I'm not just taste. Just I don't put okay. too much, but oat milk, I had a, I did a whole thing on Oatly, is that they should be using organic label on their product. I actually had a call with their, like their administrative team. Really? Uh, yeah, because I was like, listen, because when I did the podcast and mm -hmm. then I put it on Instagram, it went viral. Everyone was talking, it was insane. About, about, oh, about Oatly? Oatly. Yeah, it's actually the highest rated episode ever. What, really? Yeah. Why? What happened? What did you say? I was talking about Oatly and I said, look, all right, there's no guarantee. Again, oats. We just talked yeah, about oats. Yeah. They have canola and oil. And they're having non-organic oats. Exactly. In so, oh so, my, now, yeah. so now that I have no, no, I have no knowing that what, anything about the oats, how they're treated, at least if there's a USDA organic label, oh, now I know there's no glyphosate being sprayed on this. This is what I told them on the phone. They said, no, but it's this, this detox project certified. I go, oh, okay, that's great. Where's, where is the label? They go, oh, we didn't put it on yet. I go, then how does anyone know? Like this is, 
I had a conversation with their administrative team about this. And this is the what we need. We need change. We need companies to be more. So what happened? Did they? What, well, they said they're gonna. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, so for all we know, they're probably still. They probably are just not organic, and now they're like probably like, oh shit, what do we do now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I don't know. All I know is like if 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 there's a company out there that's sourcing organic oat milk and mm -hmm. has USDA organic label, and you know everything else looks good, it's not using all these fillers, then great. Like I go I go with that way before Oatly. Oatly's just very popular. Yeah, it's become really popular because. Yeah. The, the all alternative milks are very popular. Yeah, I mean, the second in a month or two months of, of dairy farm just shut down Borden. And that's it's happening because the demand's not, like people are becoming more awake. They're like, all right, why are we drinking wow. milk anyway? Like, what's the point of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, and also there's alternatives that taste good. Yeah, you know? at this point, but when, back when I was like starting yeah. vegan, right, right, right. there was like one in a box and it was disgusting. I mean, that's right, exactly. Yeah. So then what's your thing with oral health and how that is a direct link to body? I'm going right, I'm going right. You I'm really going, are. This is like, we're getting everything. I am, this is great. I, 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 I was very excited. I told you about you coming on the episode. Yeah. And I want to make sure that I ask you a lot of stuff because you have a lot of knowledge. Yeah, this is good. Things. This is a great interview. It's really challenging me here. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> and you're walking while you're trying to like do I this. Know, I know, I know. And I'm staying cool, which is good. Okay, good. Oral health is so important. I went to dental school for a year and a half, actually, University of Minnesota, because I wanted to be an orthodontist. And then I found out about naturopathic medicine and breast, the breast cancer of my mom, and it, everything changed. But um, I have a huge crush on oral health. Because <laughs> <Huge crush>. because <laughs> yeah, it's the nerdiest thing I've ever no, said I love too. It. <laughs> uh, because that is a window to our health in general, right? I've seen I've seen persistent warts on the hand, nothing help them, and then when they removed or cleaned out a root canal, it it, re it regressed completely. Um, there's what happens is in our mouth we can have persistent inflammation in our gum gum line or under our gums. Mm -hmm. And that persistent inflammation could put a real toll on our health. Imagine you live in a mansion, but there's one room that's always on fire, right? Mm -hmm. And that one room that is always going to be on fire, there's gonna, it's going to recruit resources and start wearing you down, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine, imagine your, your, uh, your husband always had to just throw water in that room like 10 times a day. At some point, he's going to get resentful of you and be like, fix that room. Right, right, right. See, what I'm trying to say yeah. with that analogy is that if there's all persistent inflammation... Yeah, I, Pretty much could have picked a better analogy, but yeah. I, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But if you're you, on the spot, I get yeah, it. on the spot. Yeah, but 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 that inflammation is really something for the body, right? Um, I would think because it seeps into your bloodstream. It does. Right. It does. We have a huge, and with the brain health too, right? We have nerves that literally go from the top of our mouth, the bottom of our jaw, all the way up to our brain, right? So if we have persistent infections, especially viral of the viral character mm -hmm. then it could just travel all the way up theoretically affect our brain health um and then gut the, the, the this the mouth the mouth microbiome mm -hmm. is very tightly knit to our gut microbiome too so if you're what you hold on you said an oral microbiome yeah i mean you have tons and tons of bacteria right cavities for the most part the, the work of dr stephen lynn is really important he's a he's a, dent, a dentist out in australia and he talks a lot about this. He came on my show and we went deep into this, but really cavities are just an imbalance of the oral microbiome, right? And cavities are a protective mechanism. It's actually the body protecting itself by creating a cavity, which is incredible because we really villainize cavities, but we have to understand what's going on in our mouth first, right? Um, so the foods that we eat, especially fiber, mm -hmm. are really helpful to the oral microbiome and our gut microbiome. So if anyone comes to me and they're eating a crappy diet, the first intervention I make, aside from taking out all the processed food, is saying add in fiber. We don't need enough fiber. We eat like 19 to 25 grams, mm -hmm. and that's like the RDA, and it's way too, way, way, way too, it's absurdly low. We need like 70, 80 per day. What are some good ways to get fiber if you're not eating whole wheat bread, or what's mm. some like natural other, non, like non-processed uh, yeah, nice. you think of plants. Think of plant cellulose, cellulose fiber, mm -hmm. both um, like green both leafy vegetables, broccoli, apples, apples. I mean, asparagus, that's, that's my favorite asparagus, and dandelion apples. root. Every, it's like the whole kingdom of plant base. Right. If you think about plants, the whole kingdom is going to supply us with really, really, really good fiber, and our microbiome is going to be happy. It's so, going to celebrate. So, 
basically what you're saying is people should go to the dentist. People should, people should, people should go to the dentist, but before they go to the dentist, they should eat a ton of fiber. Right, right? Okay. yeah. They should floss between meals Meal, as right. much as they can. People, I, there's people I know who haven't been to a dentist in like 10 years. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, right? And, and there's actually power in oil pulling, either with coconut or sesame oil. What is it called? Oil pulling. You put oil in your mouth and swish for like two, two to five minutes. I've heard of that. What does that do? It actually help, will help uh, reduce gum inflammation and the presence of a bacteria called strep mutans, strep mutans, which is really one of the big causes of cavities. It'll help reduce it in the mouth. So it's a good practice. It's an Ayurvedic practice. And to any oil? You can take like all of them? Coconut oil. or sesame. That's the ones that was studied in the Indian study. So you put some coconut oil in your mouth and you just like- Swish, swish it around, it five, two, to, two to five minutes. You know, I have coconut oil in my, on my kitchen or bathroom sink. And how often are you doing this? I do it every day. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're doing um, cold plunge, near infrared, um, infrared saunas, uh, uh, some oil pulling for oil your mouth. Oil pulling, and then all the other hippie stuff that I and do. And then, uh, what, no, maybe another a meditation. Grounding. I, Grounding. I go to the beach every morning. Every morning I go to the beach. But I you put live, my you're feet lucky on... enough to live near the yeah, beach. Yeah, but, but you, have, you have grass. You put your feet on the grass. You're, you know, and like, what's the benefit of that? Well, this is, this is the, it, uh, in the beginning I was like, oh, what's all this hippie stuff? But what we see in studies is that- It sounds very hippy-dippy. It is, but Earth is covered with a sea of negative electrons. And those negative electrons, when you put your feet on it, you're a conduit, mm -hmm. you conduct it. And what we see is that it helps uh, balance circadian rhythms. So like, let's say you take a flight mm -hmm. to New York, one of the best things you can do really quickly is get, take your shoes off and put your feet on the ground to help rebalance that circadian rhythm so your body can balance where you are. It's amazing. You in can, New York, we're in the concrete? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah I know. Find a little patch. I was going to say, where are you going to find it? Which, is, which actually makes me cringe. I was in New York last month and I was like, where the hell can I ground here? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Would you go to Central Park? Or? No, I didn't even go. I didn't even ground that day. I was wearing my rubber soles. and Really? Yeah, but helps reduce inflammation, helps stimulate your immune system, cortisol reduction. Um, it's amazing. Like, yeah, I, 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 can, I put up a link on the study for when I did the grounding because it's amazing stuff. How do you have time to do work when you're doing all these rituals? Uh, I mean, you what, like four well, hours of like actually like I carve it out. You know? I carve it out. What time do you wake up in the morning? Usually, you? no, usually like seven thirty. Yeah. I don't wake up. I'm, I'm not like a, you anyway. I'm not a five o'clock person. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Oh gosh. No, yeah. seven thirty. I wake up and then I'll do rituals for two hours. No, no one bother me. No phone. Right. That's it. And then at night I'll put in another hour. Wow. That's a, these are good ones though. Okay, give me some. Let's. We're gonna. We're gonna keep on moving on because I know it's been like way over an hour even, but. I want to go over the worst and best functional foods for performance. Oh yeah, and recovery. So maybe well, like three of each. Okay, well dairy should not be eaten. Right, we got that. I guess. Right, uh, sugary foods obviously. Like you, you no, already know. Some like that are super unique that I haven't heard. Uh, of. Okay, well dairy for okay. one. <laughs> uh, I've heard of it, but. Let's see. Staying away from. I I when when I put up that whole thing, it was more like here take these things rather than the only thing I really got on was dairy before a workout um, we do believe that actually having a meat heavy meal before a workout or a performance is a problem because it will disrupt endothelial dysfunction and cause like a closing of your endothelium therefore theoretically you're getting less blood to your muscles mm, um, okay that th so those two I'd stick on but really what you want to do is have nitric oxide rich foods Right? That's like beets. Arugula is one of the most densely nitric oxide, nitrate rich foods. So beets, arugula, kale, romaine lettuce, find a way to have it in there. So mm -hmm. for beets, you can eat them about an hour and a half or two hours before a workout, or you can beet juice 20 minutes before, make sure you swish it around your mouth because it'll start activating that process. So if beets are very well, underrated, I feel. They're, they're, they're so healthy. underrated. I love beets. Yeah. And that's just talking about performance, but it also supports your liver. Right. So beets are, beets are my, one of my favorite things. Um, peppermint oil, there was a study that showed two drops of peppermint oil in 20 milliliters or 10 milliliters of water helps open up your respiratory system when you're working out. That's really cool. Um, chocolate was shown, so another thing that was shown. Tart cherry or tomato juice has been shown to be very important for recovery. Mm -hmm. 
but I also use it during because it was a study on sprinters that they had better sprinting times when they had tart cherry juice like during a workout. Oranges and watermelon, they reduce the, anti, uh, the oxidants in the body. They help quench it. So it's great after a workout. Um, those are some of my favorite actually. Really easy stuff. Super easy. Like, and a lot of things I actually, like, I, I believe, I, I do. Like the, be the beets, the tart cherries, that's, those things really easy. do make, yes, yeah, easy. It makes a difference. You know what I've just recently invested in? I'm, I want to get your opinion. I bought a, a, um, this juice, this juicer where I take now, because I one of, my, one of the guests I had was, um, this. he used to be a UFC uh, champion, middleweight champion. Uh -huh. And um, he said that what he like swears by is he takes a lemon, and in this juicer, and what's it called when you masticate? I don't masticating, know. slow yeah. masticating juicer. Yeah. yeah, and puts it in his water to detox his body. Yeah. I and now mean, I do that every single morning. How do you feel? To be honest, not any different. So I want to know <laughs> what you think. I mean, uh, I, from an antioxidant standpoint, that's a, that's a good move. You know, um, uh, the vitamin C, the bioflavonoids in the lemon could be helpful just overall. Um, but but why not just squeeze it? Is there instead a difference of, between squeezing oh, oh, the lemon instead of, instead of, versus like taking the lemon yeah, and putting it. it through the juice? So what's the benefit of not you can squeeze? Well, it. you're getting the rind. I'm assuming, right? When you're doing I'm getting it. every the whole lemon. So basically, this machine. What happens is you put the you put the lemon in, and it basically juices the entire lemon. Yeah. So you're getting the rind. So it's different. The, the, inside the rind, there's other plant chemicals in there, like right. quercetin, anti-inflammatories, uh, different bioflavonoids that you're getting from that too. So yeah, it is a little bit different. Uh, like theoretically you can squeeze it and then like scrape some of it into there if you want right. but or you could just juice it does it make it does it really detox your body in your opinion uh, well it, the vitamin c will help your adrenals it'll help your liver but it's not like saying like i'm taking lemon therefore i am detoxing my whole body or me drinking last night or just but as a ritual like one of my rituals like basically what i was doing every day regardless for years. I, I, I drink a bunch of room temperature water in the morning before yeah. I do anything because I have a problem with remembering to drink water. So yeah. that's a way to like, you know, that's help amazing. hydration. Yeah. yeah. So he says, if you add the lemon, it's gonna like take it up like tenfold. So I've been doing it. I mean, I, I, I look, to be honest, I haven't looked at research with lemon and should water. Should I turn the juicers on a mask? No, you? no, you should juice beets or you should juice different vegetables too. Like. I was doing you, celery for a bit. What do you yeah. think of celery juice? Uh, the, the I think whole there was craze a, on it. I think there was a huge craze on it. I think it's helpful and beneficial. It has minerals. That's wonderful. I think that no one mentioned that if you have celery juice and you go out in the sun, you're more susceptible to getting burnt. So those who have skin sensitivity, yeah. So that's really? something. Really? Yeah, it's something that people should know. Uh, some of the constituents in celery are photosensitizing. So. I think it's important to talk about because we're in LA and people are out in the sun. Maybe, you know, if it would be different if we were in the middle Midwest. I didn't, I didn't even never heard that. So are you saying, do you think- But I think it's helpful. I, I'm, I don't think it's like a scam. Um, I think, I think- But is it necessary? But it's, but like no. as important as celery is, is so is like beets. Well, I was gonna say- You know what I'm like, saying? It's not just celery. It's just like, well, well, focus it, on celery. It's supposed to be like the panacea of life, right? Like if I, they're saying if you drink celery juice, Basically, you'll like live to be 150, I and mean, it will take away any single ailment of the world uh, that you'll ever have. And so, you know, obviously, I know that's kind of grandiose and over exaggerated, yeah. but you know how there's all everything is like everything's a trend. You remember, like kale was a huge trend, coconut. Everything is a trend. trend. Yeah, on. I know everything is a trend. I'm more concerned with okay, what do I know? The action of the vegetable is into the body. Right. Like okay, great juicing. Celery is amazing, but also chew some of it so you get that fiber and feed your microbiome. Right. You see, like, I can't, I won't write off what, if, if it's making people healthier, like they're getting more vegetables, then I'm not going to write it off. But it's also like psychosomatic. If you think it's working, it's probably, I agree. I agree. There's a huge thing to placebo. Right? And it's huge. It's huge. So let's get back to the lemon just for one second. Then that, then that could be psychosomatic. That can be your ritual where you go, this is detoxing. And who am I to say as a doctor? that it's not detoxifying you. Maybe you say, this is detoxifying my liver stronger than anything I've ever put in my body today, this morning. Let that be your word and your affirmation. And who the heck am I going to say? Well, you're Dr. G, first of all. <laughs> and I, I value what you say, but it make my life easier, to be honest. I can return the juicer and just start using my regular like little thing that I can just squeeze. Yeah. Like a little, or my, my hand. Is squeeze it in there, keep the juicer <laughs> for other juices. Come the summer, we'll do a juice fast. We'll do a ju okay, How about we'll that? 
There's a, but then I have a whole thing with juice fasting. Because well, it's not really fasting. It's, it's like you're, just, you're taking things. Well, fasting is very different, but it's just like a, we could do like a day of drinking juice. Perfect. But the beet juice, would you say then beet, if you're going to have, not to say you have to choose one or the other, but you say doing beet juice versus celery juice is what way more beneficial to the body. If you uh, had to choose. Well, if I had to though. choose, I would utilize the beets because athletic. Right, right. Like, so if, you're an, if you do a lot of exercise. Yeah, right. yeah, and I do, believe it or not, yeah. I do. No, I do believe it. <laughs> There's some muscle somewhere in here. I'm but, not, in your, in yeah. your toes, I Yeah, <laughs> my toes. But yeah, it's really, it's, 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 it's if, if we know in studies that it's helpful and what it does, then I'm going to use that. Whether, even if it's placebo or not, guess what? I'm drinking that and I'm going, man, I'm going to have my best pull up day of my yes, life. Yes, absolutely. You see what I mean? So it's like, it, there's, it's trust mind me. Over, it's also mindset, right? It's mind over matter. Like, you know, your your body does what your mind tells it to do. 1000%. Right? So if you think, if I drink that beet juice or I drink that celery juice or the yeah. lemon, whatever juice, and that's making me stronger and better, then you're going to perform better, right? 100%. So. 100%. Like, I guess, it really is. My, I literally know someone who works with athletes on mindset. It is all mindset. All mindset. If you're blessed with the performance, you know, all, all of those beautiful genes and skills, great. Then what, what about what's going on in here, especially like in baseball or something? It's you know? all up here. I mean, this is my whole life and business is all about mindset. So, you know, I, I could not agree more. Okay, we're almost done. I got one more question for you. I'm working up a sweat now. Are you? Okay, this is good, good though. This is good. I know we're going into like minute, I don't even know what, it's like 70 minutes or something. Um, wellness trends, right? So um, what are some wellness, give me two. Okay, I know I don't want to like, oh, wait, that's, oh, we do that, okay. What are some, the two wellness trends that you see a lot of, or you see that's going to be forecast in the neck in the future that people aren't, don't know about yet? Grounding, that's grounding, a big one. Grounding, okay. Yeah, that grounding, because there's actually scientific data behind what the hippies were doing and right. taking off their shoes and walking on the ground. So I always tell people, if you have the opportunity. Do it, okay. Yeah, just do it. Okay. Just take off your shoes. What's grounding. the other one? Um... I do think that, I really, really think that um, hydrotherapy, it's huge in Germany, but like the way we interact with water, hot and cold water. So I do think that cold thing was gonna really start even making more of a... But it's been pretty popular. Okay, so really. let's say, let's let's call that one popular. I'm not gonna let you use that Yeah, one. okay, so then I won't use it. Um, I would I'm say the that to Laird Hamilton, by the way, or, or like this guy named Icehoff. Do you know him? Wim Hof. Wim Hof. Wim, yeah. Wim Hof. Yeah, Icehoff. Yeah, yeah. I call him Icehoff because he's on Instagram. And yeah, and he's always ice. Yeah, he's always ice. Yeah. The, uh, well, I would say the red light therapy is. I think it's steadily increasing, especially for folks who live in places where they don't get a lot of sun. Oh, I'm big red light therapy. Yeah. Have you heard BioLight? I have them. Yeah. Oh, you do? I have, yeah, I have the small one and the big one. Me too. Yeah. I have to say I have a big panel and yeah. a small one. I mean, they got to send me the big panel then if he that's did, the yeah, case. He said, yeah, well, really, hey, he's great. I got the one that goes like, but it, but oh, it's but it's too. a doctor who who runs, who's yeah, like the no, CEO. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. He's a very nice guy. Yeah, very nice guy. Yeah. So, um, okay, yeah, well, there you go. They need to sponsor my show now that I think about it. Oh, really? They should. But like, yeah. I, I think that that light is making a slow, steady trend, particularly because there's a lot of health influencers putting it out there, but there's studies behind it. Well, I was going to ask you about that, right? Because I'm, I have, there's been a lot of studies on it for sure. Uh, my question is, and I just recently have been thinking about this. Now, if it stimulates your cells, can that cause cancer? cancer? I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a great question, actually. Um, what it's doing, it's stimulating mitochondria, right? And it's stimulating it to create energy. It's not necessarily, per se stimulating it to replicate, right? Mm -hmm. when, when cancer is caused, it's, it's caused by something that is an inciting factor to the gene, mm -hmm. right, to the DNA, and then that's giving that DNA signal that says, hey, start replicating. Something's turned on or off and start replicating over and over. What that's doing is sort of a different mechanism. It's exciting the cells such that it's not exciting it to replicate, it's exciting it to create more energy, more efficiently. It's a little different mechanism. That's a great question, though. That's a great question. We yeah. should we should ask Mr. Biolite after this. I know. I, I, I want to ask him. I think I think I've kind of like asked him a little bit, but not deep enough. Because to be honest with you, that's my only hesitation. Yeah. You know, because when you really think about what it says it does. Yeah. And then you think, okay, if that's the case, how does then that correlate? Should. You know. Yeah. And they say, you know, I've done some research, and it does say like there has never there hasn't really been a correlation between cancer and red light therapy. Mm -hmm. However. 
you know, we always find out like 20 years down the road. I know, I right? know, which is why, point. yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll do it. I don't, I don't do it every, every day. Um, sometimes I'll do it on my skin. If it's really dry, like mm-hmm. psoriasis or something like that, and it has helped. It helps with skin. If that's what it's actually taking it away completely. It's it insane. does help with skin things, yeah. but then that means there's two different met that you have like on like on the panels. You have near infrared and you have red light, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can do it with one or the other. Yeah. Um, but no, it does help. That's why I was bringing it up. But yeah, yeah. I think those are the two biggest health things right now. I mean, I can't really think of anything. Or maybe, look, we're so in it that like we see... We've, That's the thing, you're so in it. That's why I wanted to ask you because I'm so inundated with this stuff. Yeah. I don't even know anymore what's like popular now versus, yeah. you know, because a lot of times I bring something up that people are like, what? I've never heard of that. But then talking to people like you, we're all like, oh yeah, we've been doing it for a year or two. Yeah. Um, I think that, I really think that fecal transplants are going to... What? Yeah, where they do fecal transplants, where they take a healthy donor and they actually insert their feces into you and it helps repopulate your gut, I think that that is actually gonna be, because it can it can actually reverse chronic that, diseases, like celiac disease, for example, can completely be reversed with that. Like, and you just mentioned this now? Yeah, I know, right? Right at the end. You're like, That's for the next show, <laughs> you see? Stay tuned. Yeah. So wait, so you're talking about ice plunges, red light therapy, which is I've heard many times, and now you're like, oh yeah, and there's another thing called fecal replacement. Yeah, right? fecal transplants. Yeah, you could do, you could do it as a powder. Life. Yeah, you never heard? Oh, what I the thought hell I is this? I'm assuming you heard about it. That's why. Oh, you're saying no. Okay, now sorry everybody. Yeah, yeah, so, but So, uh, I thought we were going to be done and then you just have to No, it's just it's just it's really it's a really interesting uh, well they use it in hospitals for folks who get sick with uh, C diff that which is a really nasty infection it can really get you really sick actually. And it's been shown successfully, right? The nice thing is that it has the efficacy of like antibiotics, but the thing with antibiotics is when you do one round with that infection, when you do another round with it, the efficacy of the antibiotics goes really down. Whereas the efficacy of like the fecal transplant, how effective it is, is it's is still up there. So it's really it's really crazy in in What is taking poop from one person and putting it into someone else? In a very in the most sterile way possible, yes. Yeah, it's a procedure. But you have to really screen the person. But uh, uh, it's something that is really happening and it's gonna where is this happening yeah you go you go to like different gastroenterologists and you could there's different ones that would do that if you're a candidate and if there's a healthy donor but you have to have a healthy donor right they have to be digestively in good shape but mentally in good shape because there's a connection between the microbiome and your yeah. mental status so imagine imagine theoretically what's gonna happen is I take someone's poop <laughs> they put it in me and then all of a sudden I have anxiety disorder right so you have to have a really specific thorough uh undertaking to find out whose poop you're getting holy crap yeah I mean, literally to the pun. yeah literally so you're okay so one second so who what is it okay so you're saying it helps this people do this if they need a, a stronger if they're really sick if they have digestive issues digestive like, issues. like celiac disease i'd rather be sick honestly than have some really shit in my head my body really it sounds <laughs> it, it's pretty gross i know i understand but like medically imagine one time just one time and you're you don't have celiac disease anymore. That's pretty incredible. It is actually quite incredible. The microbiome is something that we have no idea about yet, but we're gonna have a much better idea in 10 years when I come back and do my... Yeah, ex- I was good. well, yeah. first of all, to leave on that note, you yeah. know what I mean? It's kind of crazy. Okay, please tell everybody where they can find you, oh. Dr. G. Yeah, so I have the Heal Thyself show that's on iTunes and everything in between YouTube. Um, on Instagram, it's at doctor.g, D-O-C-T-O-R dot G. Um, man, I'm going to be doing a lot of talks. Uh, there's a lot more media coming through. Yes, I'm good. Not, you yeah. should have a lot of media coming through because yeah. you're so knowledgeable. Thank you for like championing my cause here. Absolutely. You know, I appreciate that. You should be here. championing because you're very, like I'm telling you, you you have like knowledge on so such a wide variety of things. It's a yeah. pleasure talking to you. Just a curiosity. Yeah. You know, we should all be curious. That's I, right. I agree, but not everybody is. Not everyone is. But we need we, we need people like you who can who are like real who have like who have not just a, 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 an opinion. So you're not just flatline like I said. Yeah. But like you can act people like you who people are is a good source and a resource for yeah. people to learn from. Yeah. Because I think the problem is a lot of information. There's so much information now out there that it's really important to know where you're getting your information and from yeah. like valued sources. 
I, yeah, thank you. thank you. I appreciate that. And I will say, I don't know if I am sweating from getting grilled or being on this <laughs> treadmill, but one of the two, it's a good thing. I got the blood flowing and I'm feeling I am good. I'm very happy. So to press the white button, how many calories did you burn? I burned, um, let's see. Do you on. use a treadmill? No, I actually don't need a treadmill. Oh, okay. Uh, 244. Me too, exactly. 244? Yes. Wow. Amazing. Well, you are a pleasure. Thank I'm, you. You're going to come on. I hope to have you on regularly if that's cool. I'll, um, I'll be the regular in-house doc. Perfect. I love it. Well, thank you. And go and follow him on Instagram. Do you yeah. do your Instagram? Yeah, he okay, Instagram. I was like, I was like kind of still thinking about the fecal, <laughs> the fecal thing. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank Jen. you. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Habits and hustle, time to get it rolling. Stay up on the grind, don't stop, keep it going. Habits and hustle, from nothing into something. All out, hosted by Jennifer Cohen. Visionaries, tune in, you can get to know them. Be inspired, this is your moment. Excuses, we ain't having that. The Habits and Hustle podcast, powered by Habitnet.